couple of weeks ago, I did a video on Gotham. And before that, I did like pretty much every DC Arrowverse show there is, I think. And I thought I was done with DC, okay? I thought like, eh, I did my time, I'm finally free. And then you all just had to go and remind me about the latest, and dare I say greatest, installment in the DC Arrowverse, Legends of Tomorrow. Now, this is a show I know nothing about and with characters that I know even less. So you know what that means. Let's take a walk, everybody. Right from the beginning of the show, we're introduced to the main villain. Vandal Savage. That's right, Vandal Savage, which oddly enough is also my SoundCloud rapper name. An evil dictator blessed with immortality. He has achieved what no one in human history ever has. He was on an airplane one time and the person next to him didn't fart the whole time. There were no screaming babies and the person in front of him didn't just lunge their seat all the way back as soon as the airplane took off. How does he do it? We're then introduced to Rip Hunter, a time traveling British guy, which you'd think would be a total rip off of some other show no one's ever heard of. But fun fact, Rip Hunter actually came first. How did the council meeting go, Captain Hunter? Exactly as expected, Gideon. So we are proceeding? Indeed. Prepare the way fighter for takeoff. Set a course. United States, Star City, January 2016. Ah, the early second millennium AD. The golden age of gasoline engines, online pornography, and those silly little smartphones. Whoa, 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 wait a second. 2016 was the golden age of online pornography? Why didn't anybody tell me? So not Doctor Who gathers up all your favorite superheroes, Ant-Man, just kidding, it's the Atom. And yes, I know the Atom actually appeared in comics before Ant-Man, okay, everybody just chill, all right? The Human Torch, just kidding, it's Firestorm, who's basically just the superhero embodiment of the smash hit Sean Connery movie, Finding Forrester, Hawkman and Hawk Girl, a soccer mom, and I kid you not, Michael Schofield and Lincoln Burroughs from Prison Break? What the heck is this show? So after everyone's all gathered up, they go aboard the TARDIS and meet Gideon. I have never seen any Anything like this before. Neither have I. And considering I have 4,000 years worth of memories, that's saying something. How does a vessel of this size function without a crew? Oh, I don't need one. I have Gideon. Welcome aboard. I am Gideon, an interactive artificial consciousness programmed to operate this vessel's critical systems. <laughs> okay, so this spaceship has all this technology. It, it can time travel, it's from the future and all that. And the hologram AI looks like a PlayStation 1 game? Looks like uh, somebody ran out of budget somewhere. So long story short, they end up traveling to 1975 to meet a man named Boardman. This is, I'm, I'm sorry. You, both of you. You know who we are. I've been studying you my whole life. Ever since as a child, I first heard the story of Cheara, High Priestess of Horus, the Hawk God, and her lover, Prince Khufu. We learned that 4,000 years ago, Vandal Savage had a crush on Hawk Girl, but Hawk Girl had a crush on Hawk Man, and then Vandal Savage was like, but I'm a nice guy, and proved how nice he was by killing both of them. Then of course a bunch of bad mojo happens, and now they all have superpowers and live forever. So you know, just a typical Tuesday. So basically, Vandal Savage is just like, the girl I like doesn't like me back, so now I have to destroy the world. And then we get another reveal just kind of out of nowhere. Hawk Girl and Hawk Man are the parents of this Dr. Boardman guy. You're just as beautiful as I remember you. Mother. Not sure why we're supposed to care about this since we just met all these characters like, what, five minutes ago? But sure, throw in a plot twist, why not? So somehow, this Dr. Boardman man knows where Vandal Savage is and hands them everything they need to know. Now, while this is all going on, the soccer mom and the Prison Break brothers go to a bar, the soccer mom asks to speak to a manager, or like, I don't know, whatever the soccer moms do, and they get in a bar fight for literally no reason whatsoever. I got this. You, you made it Like, why is this scene even here? Also, flashing sideways back to the spaceship thing, it suddenly gets attacked by a time-traveling bounty hunter named Kronos. Everybody shows up to fight him, and the show just kinda turns into Power Rangers for like five minutes. <laughs> But like really though, this show is just the Xena warrior princess of our generation. And then finally, once it's all over, we get the big shocking reveal. His name is Kronos. He works for the Council of Time Masters. My former employers. 
I thought you were a Time Master. At some point, I was, in fact, a Time Master. <laughs> you people, please stop hitting me. Start telling the truth. I chose you all because a hundred years from now, your lives have a minimal effect on the recorded timeline. This is a really roundabout way of saying, uh, you're all basically losers, so I figured no one would care if you're gone. So, uh, go team! Who's ready for some Capri Sun and orange slices? But then we learn the truth about this Mr. Not Doctor Who looking dude and why he did all this stuff in the first place. I fell in love, and we had a child. A boy. Chuck Savage killed your family. He slaughtered my family. Wow, man, that really sucks. Except it doesn't make any sense! You're a time traveler with a time machine! Somebody kills your family, you know what you do? You go back a day before it all happens, happened, will have happened, whatever, you know what I'm saying. You go back, you rescue your family, take your TARDIS thing and go somewhere, someone else. Like, I get the whole idea that he doesn't want to disrupt the 2166 timeline or whatever, but like, you already stole the time machine and are trying to stop the whole thing from happening at all, so you're gonna change the timeline no matter what you do. The fact that you even went back in time in the first place means the future is already changing. This is one of the biggest problems with doing time travel in like a movie or a TV show or whatever because like it's so easy to get yourself stuck in some huge plot holes. So anyway, after everything calms down, everyone takes some time to reflect and think about whether or not they want to become the next Power Rangers or not. What I did was wrong. I should never have forced you to come along. But for me, the opportunity to travel through time, see the mysteries of the universe revealed. Do not geek out on quantum physics right now. Mr. Hunter was offering grand adventure. And at my age, you never know how many adventures you have left. I think you've got plenty of adventures left. Yes, well, there's this new waitress down at the Cracker Barrel. Maybe I'll go ask her if she wants to come over and see my collection of used handkerchiefs. What's the point of us even giving this a second thought? Rip has already seen the future. He knows exactly what's in store for each of us. Might as well stay dead. <laughs> Because the world doesn't need any of us. Certainly not Warner Brothers. I used to be Superman. You know who remembers me as Superman? Nobody. Now they got that dumb Henry Cavill dude and his dumb mustache, I tell you what. And then, of course, in the end, they all decide that traveling through time and fighting some crime might be pretty cool after all. So, yeah, this show is something else. I mean, like, I get it, okay? You take a bunch of B and C tier superheroes, give them their own show, hopefully at least one of them finds an audience, you know? I can't fault anybody for trying. You gotta take your shot. I mean, superheroes are cool right now. And like, you never quite know what people are gonna react to. But like, okay, every superhero show or movie or whatever, like, they're inherently cheesy, right? Like, the fact that we're watching a bunch of adults run around in, like, leather underwear or whatever, like, you just kinda have to accept it for what it is. But this show is real cheesy. Like, they're not even trying to hide it. It's pretty much a 90 Saturday morning cartoon brought to life. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but like, wow. This is really something. Hey, guess what? This video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is the world's largest provider of audiobooks, original audio shows, comedy albums, news, and just a whole bunch of stuff. If you sign up using my link at audible.com slash Alex Myers, or if you text Alex Myers to 500-500, you can get a free 30-day trial membership that comes with a free audiobook just for signing up. And get this, right now, if you have Amazon Prime, you can sign up and get a special offer of three months for the price of one. But this offer ends July 31st, so you gotta do it now before it's too late. Being a member gets you a whole bunch of perks, like you get one free audiobook per month, you get exclusive sales, 30% off regular audiobooks anyway. Like really, this membership kind of pays for itself. And when you download an audiobook with Audible, it's yours to keep forever. Audiobooks are perfect for car, bus, train commutes, you know, like when there's not a whole lot you can do, but you don't want to like waste all your time doing nothing, right? I mentioned this last time, but the audiobook for the power of habit, I think is a great way to start making yourself and your life better by helping you get rid of some bad habits and turn them into good ones. So again, if you sign up at audible.com slash Alex Myers or text Alex Myers to 500, 500 you can get the power of habit for free to keep with your 30 day trial. And don't forget right now, if you have Amazon prime, you can sign up and get a special offer of three months for the price of one. But again, remember this offer ends July 31st. The link is down below. So please check it out. One last thing really quick, we got some Legends of Tomorrow merch in the store, okay? We have these two t-shirts over here, and we got a bunch of iPhone cases for pretty much any iPhone version you have, so don't worry about it, we got you. The link is down below in the description, and if you put in the promo code LEGENDS at checkout, you get free worldwide shipping. So if you're a fan of Legends of Tomorrow, or you know, just the Arrowverse in general, we got you covered.
Hey, so thanks for watching. You know, as far as I know, I think this is the last DC Arrowverse show there is, I think. I think I've pretty much covered all of them. If I had to rank them, just based on what I've seen, like I haven't seen every episode, I'm not totally caught up. So, you know, like I'm sure they all kind of go off the rails at some point because that's kind of par for the course with shows like this. You know what I'm saying? But just based on what I've watched and based on the premise and just kind of based on like how much fun I had watching it, um, I would say Supergirl is my favorite. Although, like I said, my Supergirl video, it's kind of heavy handed with its message, but like it's enjoyable. It's fun. Uh, Flash was really fun. Legends of Tomorrow is really cheesy, but like it's fun and it's goofy and it's, you know, it's this fun like time travel, like, hey, let's save the universe type of show. Like it's all right. It's, it's not terrible. Uh, number four would be anything else. And number 10 would be Arrow because I personally found Arrow to be the most boring show. Like, I, I, I don't know what it is. Like, it's not, you know, I don't dislike it. It's not like a bad show in and of itself. But for me personally, my personal taste is like that was just the most boring show. But anyway, I mean, if you like Arrow, that's fine. Like, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't like it. I'm just saying I found it to be personally quite boring. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, flip that switch, twist that knob, whatever it is. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I try to reply to everything that I get. So, you know, if you want to suggest a show or you want to just tell me, you know, what's your favorite video or just, you know, give me whatever you want to say. Follow my dog Charlie on Instagram, Charlie Meets Pumpkin. My wife posts there every single day, I think. So, you know, if you want to see more Charlie, you get, you get your daily dose of Charlie over there. Check out the merch in the store and all that stuff. And above all else, everybody, have a great day and I'll see you all next time.